Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to Imprint X. What is Imprint X, you ask? I like to call it a button pressing puzzle game. It is released already at the time you watch this video and this is what it looks like. So this is a really weird game about pressing buttons and um, this is one of the earlier levels and as you can see I have four buttons here and I'm supposed to press them in the right order. Since this is one of the easier levels, it actually tells me what to do by indicating um, the button I'm supposed to press next with a different color than the other ones. So I'm supposed to press this button first and this opens up this thing which presents me with more buttons and I'm supposed to press them in any order which, uh, which completes this part of the level and proceeds to the next one by highlighting this button now. And I press this one, it opens up a similar thing and I have to do the same thing um, again. Um, every time I click a button, this counter down here goes down. So it goes down one value, as you can see. If I press a button, I'm not supposed to press it, actually goes down two. And with this, when this counter reaches zero, you lose the level. So this is basically your click counter. Every time you click, you lose one click. And if you lose all the clicks, you lose the level and you have to restart again. So let's try to avoid that by just solving this. This is one of the easy levels, as mentioned, so this is pretty trivial to do. And uh, we're going to proceed to another level. So... Every game in this, uh, every puzzle, every puzzle, every level in this game can be categorized in one of four different categories. At least that's what I found. The first category is the press the buttons in the right order category, which is um, basically follow the light for the first levels because it shows you what buttons to press by highlighting highlighting them yellow. But it changes a little bit later on. I'm going to show you one level later, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, the next category I want to show you is the timing challenge puzzle uh, category and that's actually a weird one because you don't actually press buttons in, the, in these kind of levels. Um, which is weird because this game is about pressing buttons for the most part. Uh, so um, in this level you just can press, uh, you just press the left mouse button and you can press it wherever you want. It doesn't matter where you click the, click the mouse. It's only important when you click it because you're only supposed to click it when this cube matches the square up there. And if you do it enough times it proceeds to the next sequence or next part of the level and gives you a more um, challenging challenge usually. And uh, yeah, every time you misclick, it reduces the click counter, and every time you hit, it actually goes up again until you hit the starting value, which is the max value. Ah, uh, yeah, for the, for the other levels, it can go up again as well if you hit certain buttons. So every time you progress a certain part to a certain part of level, it will give you a click back or two sometimes, uh, which yeah makes it easier to solve, I guess. And uh, those timing challenges can be interesting. This one is the first one, so it's pretty easy. Um, but they get more complex later, as you can see. They have they can have multiple um, things at the same time. They can have different patterns as well. So you will I will show you a hard level later one as well. Um, and they can be at the same time. Those are synced, but they don't have to be synced. So you can have multiple things going on the screen and you can try to hit them at the same time, which is beneficial, obviously, because for one click you get two lives, basically, which, which is cool. Uh, so those can be interesting if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, but let me show you one of the other levels first. So the third category is the Simon Says category. In those levels, <clears throat> you press a button which will then show you a pattern and then you have to reproduce that pattern. So I press this button and now the lights will light up, as you can see, in a certain order. And now I have to press the buttons in the same order. So left one, right one, and then the middle one. If I mess it up, I lose a life and have to repeat the, the part pattern. The interesting thing here is that you actually don't have to play Simon Says, you, uh, well, kind of, but you don't have to remind, uh, remember the pattern. You can remember the pattern and repro reproduce it, that's one way, but a different way of doing it is to just follow the light because you can press as soon as it lights up. Uh, it, you don't have to wait, so they get more complex, those patterns, in later levels, obviously, and it can be easier to just follow the light instead of remembering the pattern, which can be tricky if it becomes like six lights or something, so um, yeah. Okay, let's go to the last category of levels, which is the, I don't have a good name for them, I guess, matching shapes or something, or just puzzle levels maybe. Basically you have different shapes and you can press buttons which rotates them and you're supposed to get them in the right position uh, to match a certain shape. Uh, so something like this. And this one e is one of the easier ones. It's pretty easy to see what you're supposed to do. Keep in mind every click reduces the click counter by one. So if I mess up like this, I lose four clicks because I have to completely rotate it again. And if I don't initialize uh, it don't uh, instantly realize what the supposed pattern or what the supposed shape is supposed what the shape is supposed to look like or the complete shape is supposed to look like it's fairly easy to mess up so this one is a fairly easy one but I will show you one that I regularly messed up or but which, which I reg messed up multiple times already so this one was really easy as I said but uh, no that's wrong button um, that's not what I want to show you let me go there this one 
So it's not instantly obvious obvious what, what is the supposed like what the the complete shape is supposed to look like. So you might start by pressing some buttons and try to figure out what the good pattern is, and then realize no, this is probably not gonna work. Maybe like this. Uh, this seems to work. Okay. So now I lost a bunch of clicks already. Um, so it might get tricky, especially if I mess up like this uh, and click a button I'm not supposed to click. So th this did co this mistake did cost me four clicks. Uh, and that one as well, god damn it. Uh, and now I'm probably gonna fail this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm down to eight clicks. That's not gonna be enough, as you can see here. And there we go, I failed the level. Uh, well, the, the last click was stupid anyway, but it would not have been enough, so it doesn't matter. And now I have to restart. But now I know how it works, or how the pattern is supposed, uh, the shape is supposed to look, so I'm, I'm probably having an easier time solving it now. So that's the that's the fourth category. Oh, god damn it. And let's hope I like, actually complete this this time uh, and the question now is are those levels interesting are they fun to play and I have to say I don't enjoy any of them um, so this is this is the end level screen I'm going to talk about that in a moment as well let's just restart um, so I don't enjoy any of them actually let's not restart we go to another level so let's talk about let's talk about oh, those levels first so these are I don't know I just don't like it basically it's realize what the shape is looking like and then just press the buttons until it looks like that it's not really an interesting challenge it can be a little tricky like to solve this level I have to actually focus so that I don't mess up and I had to restart it at least twice I think when I played it for the first time to understand what the shape is supposed to look like um, well I probably realized it the second time but I'm not like it didn't realize it quick enough to not mess it up at least one or twice once or twice so they they're not super trivial necessarily but i don't find them interesting and i'm not sure if anyone would find them interesting maybe i guess they are kind of relaxing like they're good for, like they're a casual atmospheric experience maybe so some people might enjoy it, um from that perspective um not sure though so then the the press the buttons in the right order levels like these for example um they can be they're what I could enjoy in general, but I'm not enjoying the ones in this game. Um, so when I read the store page and the PR mail I got for this game, um, I was thinking about a game um, or a game series called Grow. Uh, like Grow Cube and Crow RPG and like tons of others. They're all called Grow something. And I played them years ago on a flash site, and I just checked today, they're actually available on mobile as well, so I just downloaded one of them and I'm gonna play that in on my next toilet break, I guess. Um, and they can be kind of fun, they're supposed, uh, there's, they're about pressing things in the right order. So you have multiple elements, and you have to press them in the right order, and they will be placed in the world, and will interact with, with each other, and if you, uh, and they will generate an outcome, and if you... Uh, have them in the wrong order the outcome will not be optimal but by looking at how they interact and looking at the outcome you can deduce the right order and so you replay it a few times and, it, and then you get the the, the perfect order uh, or the, the optimal order and you solve the game and, and beat the game and I, I like those mainly because the um, the interaction were pretty detailed and interesting to watch and like like creative I was it was not super hard it's not like a super tough logic game but they're kind of interesting exploring puzzle exploration puzzles I guess you have to you it's a little bit of deduca dedication uh, did you is, is that a word I think dedication in there so you have can figure out things uh, based on the interaction but it's not super challenging but it's kind of fun and I, I was thinking about games like this when I read the store page about this game, but these levels are kind of like that. You have to press the buttons in the right order, but they're at the same time they're not because they they like one important thing. The feedback is not really valuable. So I like the design of those levels. They look really cool, and if I press things, things happen, and all this looks really cool. I like this Tesh style, this Teshi style, nerdy thingy. I don't know. It just looks cool. I like it. This mechanical thingy is going on and moving patterns and thinking is going up and uh, open up and, and presenting more parts of level. I really like that from a visual standpoint. The thing is that they're not really functional whatsoever. So they're, those moving things, they don't actually do anything. They, these things are rotating. They don't do anything either. Um, I just have to press the buttons which opens up more buttons I press and I there's no real indicator on like there's no okay in this level special is uh, it's really easy to figure out which buttons you're supposed to press because it only presents to you the buttons you're supposed to press but in other levels you have multiple options and it's not really clear on which one to press 
Uh, basically, it's trial and error at that point because the level design, while being interesting, is not actually really connected to the buttons. Like, it's kind of connected, obviously. You press the button and something happens, but it's not uh, predictable. And there's no logical interaction going on. So they, you can't really deduce anything. It's just press a button, see what happens, and uh, do, do a trial and error style. And this one is really weird, a really weird case, because it actually has one interaction um, with the level design in it. Uh, but it's so non-obvious that it took me, like, I don't know, 10 tries to figure out how this level actually works. So at this point... Uh, we're supposed to press this button, which activates this stomper. But I just thought, okay, this is just another animation, because there's a bunch of stuff moving, which doesn't matter at all. But this stomper actually matters. If you press this button at the wrong time, uh, it actually goes back to here. And uh, it counts down the clicks, keep that in mind. So you, you probably lose a level if you do that too many times. And to solve this level, you actually have to press this button when this stomper is down. But there's no really indicator why is this stomper more important than this rotating thing down here for example, or more important than this conveyor belt? I don't know. Um, so it's a really, really weird level design for the most part. So yeah, I don't know. The Simon Says puzzles, well, do you enjoy Simon Says? I don't. Maybe some people do. Uh, I find them quite boring. Um, it's just remember the pattern or follow the pattern if you're quick enough with clicking. Uh, it, it's not that interesting in my opinion, but maybe some people enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, the timing challenges can be interesting. Let me show you one of the more advanced timing challenges. Um, they're actually quite tricky. Is there one here? Let me see. And uh, there, there, there's one. Let's just do this one. Why not? I think I didn't do this one yet, actually. So the timing challenges can be interesting. They're just not what I'm looking for at all. Well, okay, this one is kind kind of tough. Uh, I should focus on one of them, I guess. Ah, god damn it! <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, got the right one. Um, so that can be challenging and that can be interesting as well if you're into that stuff, but I'm not, uh, so I don't enjoy them. But I see, I think those are probably the best part of the game, even though I don't enjoy them because that's, but that's just personal preference. So, yeah, um, you can see the patterns can go pretty crazy from time to time. Uh, it can take you a while to figure out how it actually, like, one, when is a good time to press the button or click the left mouse button, I guess. Um... And yeah, they can be interesting, but for the most part, like, I don't enjoy any of the categories of, or any of the levels, really. And yeah, I don't know, that's just weird. Um, okay, let me talk about power-ups and the end screen and stuff like that. So let's solve this level really quick. Again, I guess. Doop, doop, doop. If, you're if you know what you're supposed to do, then it's actually really, really quick to solve this. There we go. Um, so you saw this before. You Every time you solve a level, you get this end screen. And... Um, the game doesn't use text at all, so it's trying to explain everything or demonstrate everything with just symbols and icons. The thing is, the game is really bad at this, uh, so none of this is really obvious. This is basically how well you did, so if you get three crosses, that's a good solution. And every time you, f you solve a level, you get progress in this bar, and every time this bar reaches 100, you get another heart. Hearts are not really lives, though. Instead, uh, you can trade hearts into power-ups. And again, this took me a long time to figure out because this is not obvious whatsoever. But basically, this power up, which uh, slows down time for a while, costs you two hearts. So if I use it, it slows time down time for 30 seconds. And you see, you see everything moves slow, which is obviously only useful for the timing challenge. Maybe for the Simon Says challenge as well, but not for this level, obviously. Uh, it costs two hearts. This one will give you extra clicks, um, a bunch of them. And it costs four hearts, and this one will just is just a freebie and lets you solve the level. Like you press it and you solve the level, and it costs six hearts. And I don't know. It's, as I said, the game doesn't explain them at all and just expects you to, I guess, try and error. Uh, but the indicators, like it's it's not obvious. Like okay, let me show you what happens if you use more of your hearts. So if you if we use this, we got well, we filled up the bar, but it was full already. And now it shows X four X X X X X X x6 here and x4 and like four times and six times and if you know what it means it, it okay yeah this means it takes four hearts to activate this but if it's this is not ever explained and uh, i don't think this is obvious at all like it took me a while to figure this out and i don't know i i ignored the power apps for the most part of the game because i I, I couldn't bother to try and error what they do and how they work and why are they gray it out and I don't know it's just like, the game tries to to avoid language or text 
but fails at explaining itself without text. So that that's a problem, in my opinion. In general, the UI design is not great. I like the level design, but the color scheme can be a little bit annoying. Sometimes it's too dark and you 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 don't see what's going on in some levels. It's okay for the most part, though. But in some edge cases, it's a little too dark. The UI, as uh, uh, however, as mentioned, looks not great in my opinion. Like the the icons don't look great and they clash with the design of the levels in my opinion. The art style of the characters is kind of clashing as well. I think it doesn't really fit the re the design of the levels. I don't know. And I'm not a fan of the art style either but that's probably just personal preference. Anyway, the menu doesn't look great either. Again, it tries to avoid text for the most part and okay those buttons are pretty obvious what they do this goes back this continues playing the level this goes to the option menu this restarts the level the option menu however is not super clear okay this this part is still still okay but if you go into here it gets really interesting especially because this is the only part of the game where there is actually text and it actually has a language selection down here which is bugged for some reason it just shows language xx and language x instead of proper languages like English and German and French or something along those lines and it doesn't change anything if you press them. I, this seems like an unfinished feature. This is a preview version but the game releases tomorrow. Uh, I mean there is an, there's the possibility that this is the preview version and they forgot to push out the release build and, um, and it will be fixed there but I can't tell you, I don't know. Um, this is the version I have right now. Um, keep in mind when I said a game is released tomorrow this is because I recorded the video yesterday, if you watched the video today. Um, that was confusing now. Anyway, when you watch the, ge the video, the re game is released already, but when I record it, it is not yet. So this might be because this is the preview version, but I couldn't tell you because, I don't know, it's not fixed right now. Um, those options are not really important, but it's nice to have them, I guess. This, this speeds up animations, this allows you to move the camera, which is pointless, but it doesn't hurt either. This disables the hero portrait on the lower right, and this disables the UI. If you turn this off, you actually cannot use the power-ups anymore, which is weird. Um, anyway, so this is the game options menu. The music or the sound options are not intuitive whatsoever. So. Okay, this symbol says this is the sound option menu. So why, why is there the same symbol down here? Is this music? No, probably not because this looks like music. So this must be sound effects. Yeah, you can deduce it like this, but it's not obvious. It would be easier to have just have text here or, or be more obvious with the symbols. Especially if you look at this icon. What is this? Okay, I figured out this is the noises the character makes, but this is not obvious whatsoever. And I don't know, text would just be better. I, 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 I like... I, 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 I. <laughs> I like when games try to avoid language if they do it well, but this game doesn't do it well in my opinion. Like it's nice, you don't you don't have to like it's language independent, which is cool because you don't have to translate. Um, and it can be nice to have the game be taught to you by a good UI and the game design. But it just doesn't work in this game in my opinion because the UI is not good enough. It's not in, not intuitive enough to actually, well, yeah, do this. So yeah, the graphic menu is um, okay as well, but it also has a bug, uh, which I cannot really demonstrate because that would crash the recording. Anyway, so you have resolution options up here, which works uh, well. We have a bunch of resolutions, um, which you can choose from, so that's good. Um, then you have full screen and window mode here, no borderless window mode. And this is graphics quality. Again, this menu is bugged. There are only two options here. Uh, zero stars and five stars and I cannot actually if I select this the game looks terrible the problem is if I do this the recording actually freezes and um, can, I cannot present um, demonstrate you anything anymore so I'm not gonna press it but just trust me this is uh, graphics quality but for some reason there are like a bunch of options missing apparently there should be one star two star three star four star but there's only zero and five stars which doesn't make sense and then you can choose on which monitor the game should be displayed okay so that's for the option menu, which is okay, I guess. It doesn't need more. Just It's just not super intuitive, which is weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's get to the main menu and show you some art there. So you get a feeling of how this game looks. Oh yeah, if you're thinking about story, um, same issue here. The game doesn't use text to tell the story. There's just a textless cutscene, uh, which is not obvious to the, the cutscene is not obvious whatsoever. By reading about the game on the store page and watching a cutscene, I think I know what is going on somewhat. I think you are a clone, like a hacker clone, and you hack people's mind to um, because their their minds are in um, infested by a virus which you are supposed to defeat, and you defeat it by pressing buttons apparently. So um, that's I think what is going on, but. 
yeah, I'm not sure because the game doesn't really tell you, like not in detail anyway. So yeah, that's Imprint X. I, I have to say that's it's not what I expected at all when I saw this game. Uh, and it's not what I enjoy either. I, I can imagine some people actually liking this. Like the visuals are kind of nice. Like I like the level design. The music is kind of relaxing and fitting for the most part as well. So that, that works. I guess it works as a casual atmospheric experience overall. Um, if you're not in those frantic uh, timing challenge puzzles. Um, so some people might enjoy it for that. But if you're looking for a good puzzle game. I don't think this is the right, right uh, place to look. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe some people enjoy these kind of levels but I definitely don't and I have a really hard time imagining imagining people enjoying most of the levels some of them yeah sure the timing challenge some people will like that but the Simon Says puzzles and and as I said like I could enjoy the press buttons in the right order puzzles in general I, I enjoyed the grow series but like the the, the the, there is no interaction with the level design like it doesn't matter where those buttons are placed You're just supposed to press them in some order, but you the, the level doesn't really tell you by by the design of the level Which buttons to press which is a shame in my opinion um, But yeah Anyway, maybe you find the game and uh, you find the game interesting um, after watching this video So if you do so uh, feel free to press the link in the description below and go to the store page and take a look for yourself um, the game is released since today, if you're watching the video on the published day, uh, it's called Imprint X. I am TH Point. thanks a lot for watching, have fun and see you next time.